Welcome to Electron Online. In the previous video, we, show, we showed you how to find the reactance and the impedance of this particular circuit. So now that we know what those are, we're now going to show you how to turn that into a phase diagram. So again, we have the reactance of the inductor, the reactance of the capacitor, the resistance, and the total impedance. So let's go ahead and put that on the diagram. So the inductive reactance goes straight up, and that's 188.5. We make the arrow about the the appropriate length relative to the size. So this would be X sub L equals to 188.50 ohms. I know that there's a, some extra significant figures there, but just to make things a little bit more accurate later on, we're going ahead and, and keep those. Notice the capacitor reactance, which is 180 degrees out of phase with inductive reactance, will then be down here. And of course, since it's a larger number, we have to draw a larger arrow right here. So that would be X sub C is equal to 265.26 ohms. All right, which means that when we add those two up, you can see that there's a greater capacitor reactance than inductor reactance. So the capacitor overpowers the inductor in this particular circuit. Then we have the resistance, which goes sideways this way, and it's 200 ohms, so R equals 200 ohms, oh, no, 100 ohms, I made it too long. Okay, 100 ohms, that makes it about this long right here. So R equals 100 ohms. Let's see here, there, yeah, that's about right. And so now how do we find the impedance to that circuit? Well, first we're going to add the two reactances together. We know that X, their total reactance is going to be equal to X sub L and meant to do x sub l minus x sub c so in this case that's equal to a, to a x sub l being 188.50 ohms minus 265.26 ohms and that would be equal to 76.76 .76 ohms now i realize that that's going to be a negative number but actually when we find the reactants we have to take the absolute value of that and so it's going to be the absolute value of negative 76.76 .76 ohms all right now, graphically, what does that look like? First of all, we're going to subtract this, this from that, so we get a total <coughs> reactance this way. So here would be X equal to 76.76 .76 ohms. And then if we want to find the impedance of that circuit, we, we then vectorially add these two together. So let's do that right here and right here. And let me use a different color. So here then, this would be the impedance of the circuit. That would be Z and Z would be equal to, well, let's see here. I think in my previous example, I used 200 ohms for the resistor, not 100 ohms. That's why I remember that. Okay, well, we can make the quick adjustment then. This is supposed to be 200 ohms. So that it lines up with the impedance. Let's do that. So instead of a 100 ohm resistor, I have a 200 ohm resistor. Let's make that quick adjustment. All right, so make that 200 ohms long. There my R is equal to 200 ohms. And so now when we add these vectorally, you can see that we get a slightly different impedance. Our impedance is going to be this way. There, my impedance is going to be equal to 214.22 ohms. So what I did here is I realized that in my numbers that I used, I actually used a 200 ohm resistor, not a 100 ohm resistor, so I adjusted my circuit here, and so that would be then the result. So this is a diagram, that's not necessarily what we call a phasor diagram, but this diagram here shows the relative impedance, capac um, not reactive, uh, capacitive reactance, inductive reactance, and resistance across the resistor, all relative phase to phase with one another. Now, what that means though, is that the current will be in phase with the resistance offering opposition to the current flow. So let's use pink for that. So our current will be in the same phase as the largest opposition offered by the resistor. So whatever current is happening in the, in the circuit, the resistor always opposes that current, obviously. A resistor always has some resistance to the current, so let's call that I. Let's use a small I for that. And then notice that the voltage across the whole circuit, if you were to take a voltage meter measuring the voltage across the whole circuit, which is the same as the voltage of the source here, that would be in phase with the impedance here. So let's draw, using blue for that, let's draw the voltage here. 
and notice that there's a phase difference between the two. So there's a phase difference, call it phi, that's a phase difference, and that's relative to the current. So you can see that the voltage lags the current, or the current leads the voltage. Again, since the phase angle is below the horizontal axis, we're dealing with a capacitor circuit. In a capacitor circuit, the current leads the voltage. E stands for EMF, I stands for current, I is ahead of the voltage, so I leads the voltage in a capacitive circuit. Why is it a capacitive circuit? Because the opposition to the current of the capacitor is larger than the opposition offered by the inductor, so it acts more like a capacitive circuit than an inductor circuit, so therefore we can say that yes, the current will lead to voltage in this case. Now the voltage across the inductor will happen at this moment in time, so we can go ahead and let's say here this would be V sub L, and then the voltage across the capacitor will be in this phase right here, and since it's a large inductant, a uh, large, I should say, capacitor, I can then make that a larger voltage, so this would be the voltage across the capacitor. And now we have what we call a phase diagram that compares when the voltages will reach their maximum, so we have the voltage across the inductor, the voltage across the whole circuit, the voltage across the capacitor, and the voltage across the resistor, so that would be V sub R. And so this is now what we call a phase diagram that shows you when you're going to have the voltage reaching a maximum across each component. Well, how do you know what that is? Well, it's a projection of these phasers, or these vectors as we would call them, projected onto the x-axis, the horizontal axis. Notice in this particular moment in time, the voltage across the inductor would be zero because the projection of that vector onto the horizontal axis gives you no value at all. The voltage across the capacitor would be zero at that moment. The voltage across the resistor would be this value, and the voltage across the whole circuit would be this value projected onto the horizontal axis, which means that the voltage across the whole circuit at that very moment in time would be equal to the voltage across the resistor, because since it's zero across these two components, there's only one component left, the resistor, and the whole voltage drop would be across the resistor. It's kind of interesting to take a look at that. Now, what would be the current in the circuit? Well, the current I, as a function of time, is going to be equal to the ratio of the voltage by the voltage source divided by the impedance. So the current will always be equal to that. And the voltage across, across the source will always be 100 volts, and the impedance will always be 214.22 ohms. So in this case, that would be equal to, and of course I shouldn't use a small i, I should use a big I because that's going to, of course, oscillate over time. So the current is going to be, RMS current is going to be 100 volts divided by 214.22 ohms. And let's get a calculator and figure out what that is equal to. So take the inverse of that, times 100 equals, and you can see that the current is going to be 0 0.4668 amps. 0 0.4668 amps. So now that you also have the impedance, we have the voltage of the source, 100 volt RMS, impedance 214.22 ohms, so that means IRMS will be 0 0.4668 amps. Remember that this was RMS voltage, so this is going to be RMS current. So now you know how to draw the respective, uh, what we call reactance of the capacitor, reactive inductor, total reactance, the resistance of the resistor, from that we added vectorially to, to, to get the impedance, from the impedance we can find the RMS current, and we then can find out when the voltages occur relative to each other, and we can find the phase difference between when the voltage, occur, when the voltage occurs across the whole circuit, first when we have current across the resistor, the phase difference between the current and the voltage of the circuit, which is phi, and if you don't remember, we can find that phi is equal to the arctangent of the opposite side, which is the reactance, divided by the addition side, which is R, and that's how you find the phase angle of that. So again, hopefully that clears it up. Now one more thing I wanted to do is go ahead and draw those out. If I use pink for current and, and uh, a blue for voltage, if the current looks like this, And we know there's a phase difference, phi, between those two, then we should be able to draw also the voltage relative to that. And the voltage is going to lag the current by that phase difference. Let's find out what that phase difference is equal to. 
So when we plug some numbers in here, so this would be equal to the arctangent of x. x was equal to 76.76, r was equal to 200. And so what would that be? 76.76 divided by 200, take the arctangent of that, would be 21 degrees. 21.0 degrees, that would be the phase angle, the phase difference. Okay, so the voltage lags because, remember, the phase diagram will rotate like this. So the current is first, the voltage follows 21 degrees behind. So the voltage will look kind of like this. This, 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 and like that. So you can see that the voltage will lag and that the phase difference between the two Notice this here is the phase difference, phase, which is 21.0 degrees. And there's a lag in the voltage, meaning that the current will reach a maximum first, and the voltage then will reach, reach a maximum 20 degrees, 21 degrees later. Okay, and that's how we find the phase difference, the impedance, the reactance, the current, and how to draw the phase diagram of the voltage across each of the components.